this is why I always, I love to talk about like just giving yourself grace. You're going to mess yeah. up. Things are yeah. going to go wrong, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. It's, it's a lesson for you to learn so you can get back up and do things differently and just, just don't give up. Calling all professional neurodiverse mamas seeking to reclaim their time, energy, and focus. I have a special invitation for you. The Simplified Schedules mini course will help you to uncover the top three things your neurodiverse brain needs to slay your day and reduce overwhelm instantly. This is the one mini course you need to get your life together without quitting your job or leaving your family. You'll also be able to leave this course with an actionable plan to create that flow and freedom you so desperately deserve. So if you're ready to learn, take action, and create flow, then you can learn more at thecharmedlife.me backslash simplified me. Make sure to download your copy, tell a sister friend, and I'll see you there. Welcome to We Ain't Normal. My name is Charmaine Fuller, and I'm an everyday mom sharing how I navigate my ADHD brain. Each week, we share tools, inspiration, and resources to help you uncover how to reclaim your time, energy, and focus. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Now on to our show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the We Ain't Normal show. Today, I am here. I am like super duper geeked. I am here with my girl, Stacy Walker. She is the founder, the brainchild behind Unleash Your Ambition. Her space is a fabulous space for women, soul, entrepreneurs to grow their business in a way that just feels absolutely juicy. So there is no bumping and grinding in her groups. <laughs> it is all flow and freedom. And I'm super excited to have her here today as, as we continue this trajectory on motivation and how to get it, keep it, and do you even want it? So Stacy, what's up? Say hello to the people. Hello, hello. And I love the introduction. Thank you so much, Charmaine. I'm so happy to be here. Yay. So as we dig into motivation, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on it? I've had some guests that have had some thoughts like it's not real. I kind of have mixed thoughts like on some points, yes, motivation works, but on other points, it's like, Sometimes that's <laughs> got to come from you. Like, can't nobody like outsidely motivate you all the time. I absolutely agree because most of the time I'm not motivated to do a darn thing. That's majority of the time. So I operate from a space, whether it's from my business or my personal life, like I have to realize like, okay, what are the top three priorities that need to be done today? Because of course we could have a long list, an endless yeah, list of to do's. And for me personally, that becomes overwhelming to where I don't get anything done. So what has helped me stay motivated, even when I don't feel like it, first of all, I have to tell myself, what, what is the end goal? What is the thing that I want? You know, I, I do my best to stay focused on my ultimate vision, whatever that is. And my ultimate vision it's a pretty big vision, but I know there's little steps along the way that I need to take in order to make that happen. So every day, if I just focus on three things that are going to get me closer to whatever goals that I have for my business, to my life, or any other area of my life, I, I got to break it down to the simplest form. That's how I operate best. That keeps me out of overwhelm. And if I can even do one thing, one thing out of those three things... I, I've accomplished something great, you know, because winning. The yes, because the alternative is I won't do anything at all. So I'd rather do one thing than nothing at all or three things on a good a good day, you know, okay. but I I give myself grace. I think that has helped me the most because I there was a time when I would I used to beat myself up. I would compare myself to other people's successes and how far along they had ha had gotten in. It took many years for me to finally like stop looking at what other people are doing and just focus on myself, my journey and and figure out like the things that I can do to help me keep moving for forward, you know, no matter what's going on in my life because right. Things are always going to be happening in life. I mean, there's never a right time to do this and that. 
unexpected surprises and circumstances. Especially when you have kids, girl. Yes. (laughs) And even without kids, things happen, you know? So, so on top of, you know, just life in general, like my stuff, I have my, you know, my seven-year-old, I have Jordan and, and, you know, the family unit. So there could be multiple things happening that are beyond my control. So instead of me trying to control everything and everybody, which I know I can't, but for some time, sometimes my mind's like, girl, you got all this. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to get all of this, but me realizing like, I need to surrender to the fact that I don't control everything. And the thing that I do have control over is the way I think. Yeah. What am I thinking? How am I feeling? Am I heated? And if I'm heated, I need to know why I'm heated. For example, um, a few days ago, when was it on Sunday, Jordan went over to his grandfather's for the weekend. So it was just me and Jerome, my husband. And I woke up from a nap and I was just I was in a bad mood. You know, I don't know what was going on, but I did not like how I felt. And I was to the point to where like I was annoyed by my husband and it had nothing to do with him. It was just nothing. all me. And I told him, you know what? I need to go for a walk because I'm, I don't like how I feel. And I said, and I don't want to take it out on you because I know it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me. So I want to just do something that's going to make me feel good and motivate me to get in a better state of mind because it could have been rough in that house that day. And I don't want that to happen, you know, because I don't like lashing out on people. I used to have so much, I did not not have much self-control with that, but now I'm more aware of how I think and how I feel. I'm more in tune to what makes me tick, how I think, um, what, when I'm in an environment, like how, how am I feeling? I'm, yeah, like yeah. I, I pay attention to that so much more before I used to not do that. And I, and, and I would always react, you know, I, right. it was just automatic reaction, whether that was good, bad, ugly, you know, <laughs> seeing red. All of the above. You know? <laughs> yes. So, so what's helped me stay motivated is just really paying attention to how I think and how I feel and staying, staying connected to the things that I want to accomplish without putting unnecessary pressure on myself. So I got a couple of things out yeah. of that. Yeah. So the first is, because I was going to ask like, you know, well, how do you break things down? But it sounds like awareness mm-hmm. is the way that you begin to know how to break things down. So I got the awareness piece out of it. Like that was the biggest one. And then taking, giving yourself grace and space, right? When you know that things are just not feeling the way and feeling is everything. Yes. Oh my gosh. Feeling Mm -hmm. is the secret to like everything. And knowing that when you're not in the vibe that you want to be in, let me switch this up. Let Mm -hmm. me switch up what's going on. Because if I stay here, I might say some stuff I have to apologize (laughs) for later. You know, I felt you on that. Like, I'll Mm -hmm. be mad at my husband. It's like, but he didn't do nothing though. Like, why? (laughs) I know, and I feel well, so I bad. I want to cut the man out. Like, let me go take the walk. <laughs> yes, yes. So, like, those things there are huge. When you talk about, no, none of us really, like, when it comes to doing the things that you know you need to do to get to the places that you need to get to. Yeah. Don't nobody want to do that. No, I want to eat snacks and watch Netflix and like live my best life that way and collect checks. But that's not the way it works. So you have to find that connector piece. Mm -hmm. And it sounded like for you, it's just being aware of what you what you want, what you're going after and where you are. What do you feel about? as you begin to like create these spaces and how do you keep all of that together? Because it's so easy with when life gets crazy that you lose sight Mm -hmm. of that, that picture, that image that you have. Well, I make sure I don't lose sight of it. So every, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely share that. So uh, every single morning and right before I'm going to bed, I make sure that I have time just for me. Like usually if I'm in the bed, people leave me alone, you know, majority of the time, you know, don't wake me up, you know, because you don't know how I'm going to 
<laughs> but anyway, I, I've created um, something that actually works best for me. So um, like, for example, tonight, I'm going to listen. I, I have a playlist on YouTube of meditation playlist of, you know, certain sounds and frequencies and affirmations that are like subliminal. Um, and I'll listen to that and just sit still and I'll try to picture it in my head. Like it's a, a movie, like of the things that I want to accomplish in my life, whether they're short-term goals or like the ultimate thing that I want, my version of an incredible life. And if I can't like really solidify that vision in my head, in my mind, like if it isn't, if it's not clear, I have a journal, it's a digital journal. I can't even think of the name of it, but um, Is it it's Pinzu? Just, Pinzu, I I do use that, but it's another one. It's like daily journal. It it's really simple, um, and I put my my list of of things in each area of my life: health, wealth, career, relationships, uh, spiritual, emotional. And I know I'm missing one more other thing. Did I say physical? I don't know if I said that, but basically so. the seven key areas. So. I write at least one thing that I just really want. And it doesn't have to be like something like so big that it just doesn't seem like I'm, I'm never going to accomplish it. It could be something as simple as, you know, like for my physical health, health, like uh, walk three times a week, two days a week, Pilates, especially if I'm not doing that right now. So, so I have to picture myself going outside 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, five minutes going in outside, walking, you know, have my headphones on, sun shining on my face. You know, I, I see myself, you know, holding the leash for walking my dog. And I just run that in my head over and over again, because you already know this. You already know about the mind and how, you know, when our subconscious and our conscious sync up together, um, that's when you're able to actually create the amazing things in your life that you really want. If they're not syncing up, then what I do, I just focus on reading that list of things and visualizing it in my head. And I do that in the morning and at night. And if it's two minutes, that's fine. If it's five minutes, that's great. If it's 20 seconds, but making the habit of doing it in the morning and night when I'm not being distracted by family, dogs, the TV, traffic, phone, all of that. Like, that's why I do it before I get up and after I go to bed. So <laughs> that is my love language. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that visualizing mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. It is so huge. And the part of, and it helps with that motivation piece, because yeah. to me, if I've seen it in my head and I've experienced it and it feels so awesome mm -hmm. and, and it's like, why wouldn't I want to go do that? Right. Like what's in my way? Oh, sending an email is in my way. Yeah. You know, like, because I know the end result, like I've seen the end result. Yes. And so the visualizing twice a day, I can attest to that just being game changing. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest gifts that I got from being in a group with you was mm -hmm. that rundown of those life areas. What does this feel like? Like, because I don't think as women, I can't speak for men because that's not what I am in this lifetime. Yeah. But from what for women and moms specifically, like before you did this work, how often as a mom did you sit down and visualize? Like we didn't feel Never. like we had the time. You didn't like carving time out for yourself in the morning and at night. Yeah. What? Yep. <laughs> but it's non-existent. Non-existent. But like mm -hmm. Stacy said, and if you've been listening to this season, like all of my other guests have said, start where you are. Yeah. If it's five minutes, do that. If it's two yeah. minutes, do that. Just make it a consistent practice. Make yeah. it something that you engage in. Make it something that you come to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And because if you see it as a chore, that energy is going to carry over into the visualization and you're not, it, it's not going to happen and pop like you want it to. Try, I, I know that from experience. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. 100%. And another thing that I didn't mention is like, I also think about like, what are the consequences if I don't do these things? Like Ooh. that, that's a motivator right there. Because um, like, for example, I don't want to be seven years old. If I'm, if I get to that age, 
I don't want to get to that age and work because I have to. Or say I should have, could have, would have been a. Yes. I don't want that. That terrifies yeah. me. You know, like um, I, I'm 40, 46. I think I don't even know how old I am anymore. That's I don't not even the internet track. business. <laughs> Well, I'm 46. So like if I make it to 70 and I make sure like, of course, financial freedom and generational wealth is big for me because my parents never told, taught me about that. My mom grew up very poor uh, in the country in Alabama, lived in a shack with four, four siblings, two parents, dad, Detroit, had everything handed to him, didn't want for nothing. But, you know, the union between my parents, they never really taught me how to build wealth. I learned from them that my mom, penny pincher, my dad, free spender. spender. Yes. yes. So I, I saw in, you know, I saw this in my house. So, you know, as I got older, I didn't know that I had a way to create wealth. I just thought, you know, I had to go to school. I had to get a career, stay at the career until I retired. Didn't didn't matter if I liked the job or not, did it pay well? You know, yeah. and I knew early on that I, that just didn't fit me. Like I struggled a lot I, for a long time. I thought there was something wrong with me. So, so looking at like, what is the alternative when I'm, I'm 70 or if I get to 80, like, and I'm having, I have to work so I can survive. That's terrifying to me. <laughs> That's you know. hella ter- terrifying because at yes. 70 and 80, I want somebody driving me around and I want to be with all my little senior friends and we're going on trips. And yes. I, I just want to, I just want to have the life that I have now, like magnified, mm-hmm. like, cause my kids will be gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And just being able to have that freedom. You yes. Know? But definitely at 70, it's like right now I'm working at a space. Yes. It's like I have a freedom plan, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It's like you have to, even in that, you have to have a plan. Like, what does that look like for you? Mm-hmm. You know, in the past, I've went to jobs and it's like, okay, I hit the money, but I didn't have a clear plan and going mm-hmm. back to that awareness. And so even if you do that each time you do it and you mess up, that's great feedback. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Do not give up on yes. the, the vision that you have in your head. Yeah. Keep it moving and keep going through, you know, trying new things. I'm glad that you mentioned that because a lot of people don't talk about that. Uh, this is why I always, I love to talk about like just giving yourself grace. You're going to mess yeah. up. Things are yeah. going to go wrong, but it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. It's, it's a lesson for you to learn so you can get back up and do things differently and just, just don't give up. You know, if you give up, if you got it, I mean, depending on what you want to um, create in your life, you know, maybe you need to take a break for a week or two. But as long as you don't give up, you know, because again, what's the alternative? And here's the thing, you know, one of the biggest mindset blocks I used to have was like, oh my God, five years is a long time to set like this goal. Like I want it like yesterday, Mm -hmm. but then I'm like, girl, you're going to spend the five years anyway. Anyway, yes. You might as well spend it working towards something that will bring you joy once it's manifested. Yes. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, (laughs) boop. I know because that was was me too. I think we are just all programmed to... One thing yesterday, now, yesterday, yeah. two years ago, you know, <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I can see how that's just a big problem for everybody, especially when you're not taught or you have to, un- you have to unlearn that. Learn. And it's not easy. Like it, it's not easy. It can be done, but you have to stay dedicated, committed. Yes. You're going to fall short. Yes. You're going to might feel like giving up. Yes, you're going to get scared at moments. But the thing is, like you said, Charmaine, you just don't give up. You don't give up. Stay connected to that vision as often as you can. I know when I have times when I'm like really struggling with staying motivated, like I took um, last year, I took gosh, like three or four months off for my business because I was recovering from COVID and I felt really disconnected from my business. I didn't even want to do it anymore. I was like contemplating like just quitting. And I was like, no, like I've come this far. I know why I've 
I've, I've done all this hard work and failing and blood, sweat and tears all these years just to quit. No. no. So I decided, you know, what do I need to do in order to not only get motivated, but get reconnected to my vision for my business? Because I, you know, it means something to me beyond just making money. Like it has helped me grow in so many ways and helped me connect with so many people along the way. Like I, I, I never even anticipated any of it. So I had to think about like, what can I do differently, but keep things simple because you know, I'm not about overwhelm. You know, I'm not about burnout. No, ma'am. I, I still want to get the same results, but leave working even less. That's so I have a lot to, of least effort. Yep. Yep. So I have to actually switch my perspective about everything I'm doing, not just in my business, in my life, how I'm thinking, what I'm doing, how I'm being, and how can I create that ideal situation? So that's what I've been building since I came back. And I feel so connected to my business business again since then. So I could have easily, easily thrown in the towel. And I would have been okay, but I was like, no, no, like, no, why am I going to do that? But I took a break, you know, and I didn't feel bad about it at all. I I think I needed it. I I think COVID was an, getting COVID was an unexpected blessing for me Yeah, because it allowed me to look at my business differently and build it in a way that works for where I'm at right now. Because the way that I look at life, nothing's ever set in stone. No. Things can change from day to day. Um, I do have my ultimate vision in my mind, but how I'm going to get there, there's an infinite number of ways to get there. So I don't stress out about like, if I do this thing and it doesn't work out, I, I don't like think it's the end of the world and give up. I'm like, okay, let me look at this like a mad scientist. How can I do things differently and play with this and make a game out of it? I like to make it a game because that releases the pressure and helps me stay motivated. You know, it's like little mind tricks you do on yourself. So, so that's what, what has helped me for sure. I always have to remind myself, there's an infinite number of ways for me to manifest whatever I want in my life. Like I don't, I do my best not to get attached to the outcome because when I do that, I know I'm limiting myself and the possibilities of how the opportunities, the people, the ideas can um, come to me in order to make it happen. And usually when I surrender to the possibilities, I figure either I figure out something or somebody connects with me and it leads me in that direction where I wanted to go anyway. And trying to hold on to like every piece of your dream is stressful as fuck. Yeah, it is. Trust me. When I ask, want to know how I know? (laughs) Oh, I know. (laughs) But it's so you know. stressful. And then it takes you out of that creative space yeah. because you're trying to line all the pencils up together when sometimes you need to have them all over the floor yeah. in order for them to create order. The only thing that you really need to focus on is, you know, it, it's kind of like, it's the weirdest, um, dichotomy is not the word I'm looking for, Pair paradigm not paradigm I'll think of it but it's so weird because on one hand it's like have a goal Mm -hmm. know where you're going be aware but on the other hand there's like this balance in between knowing and not knowing maybe that's what I was looking for yeah there's this balance in between knowing and not knowing and you have to be okay with being in the center of that yep yep absolutely I, I think of like law of polarity, you know, yes. there, 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 there's, I mean, it's not really a balance. It's just kind of just equal like, and opposite. Yeah. 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 Equal and, opposite. and it, you really got to pay attention in order to like, really make that work. Like you just can't <laughs> be mindless thinking and, no. and all of that. Like you really got to pay attention. And I know it takes practice. It, you know, I I've come so far and I still have so long to go, a long way to go. I'm always a lifelong student when it comes to it because the mind is a fascinating thing and just how it operates, how how you can easily program people, condition people, traumas. I mean, just so many things. And like 
the more that you learn about yourself and what makes you tick and why you have certain beliefs, ideas, and thoughts about things and start, you know, just kind of dissecting them layer Mm -hmm. by layer, um, you'll start to realize like, hey, I've taken on some thoughts, beliefs, or ideas that don't serve where I'm going. Like, you don't even have to know where it came from. No, It's just that you just need to decide that you don't want to you want to cultivate a new belief, thought, and idea that's actually going to serve you. So it's like the opposite of whatever thought, belief, and our, our idea. And that takes practice. It takes practice, but it can be done. You just got to be dedicated as often as possible. You mentioned consistency. It doesn't have to be every day, but it's encouraged to yeah. do it every day because, you know, the more that you do it, the the quicker the changes are going to happen. But, you know, we're human. Things yeah. are going to happen. So if you can be as consistent as possible, it's inevitable that you're going to get better at it. That just leads back to the awareness piece. Like Mm -hmm. in order to be able to pivot like that and Mm -hmm. to be able to notice that there's a certain amount of time that you just have to sit and actually take a look at. There's this, was it a, I think it was Sandy Gallagher had this exercise where like for the day you kind of policed your thoughts right Mm -hmm. but not from the space of trying to fix just from the space of noticing Mm -hmm. and kind of writing down like the thoughts that you noticed like the things that you did habitually without thinking like what were those things that you do habitually without thinking then going is it still working for me doing it like this or like you said like you said and pulling it apart and Mm -hmm. like looking at well can I do it a different way well if Mm -hmm. I did it like this what would it be like and just being able to do that keeps you it keeps me going yeah because if every day is the same then I'm not as invested yes I want some things to be boring but we (laughs) we need certainty and we need a bit of uncertainty as well when you think about human needs and so Mm -hmm. you need that bit of going back in and checking in with yourself um and like Stacy was saying this is not overnight no I mean the entire season of this podcast has reiterated that particular fact if Mm -hmm. you came here to get a life hack this is not the podcast for you no I am so sorry just you know but this is not a life hack this this is a lifestyle this is yeah a way of being this is a way to keep your life in alignment with what you want yeah And not just a quick fix, because quick fixes will always lead you back to being overwhelmed, burned out and hating life. Oh, say it again. (laughs) Say it again. You know, so true, because we all want the quick fix. But the thing is, why don't we just take the long road? Because spend the time anyway. Yeah, we're going to have to come back to it anyway. You know, we have to go. We'll end up back in the same place, you know, and, you know, working in the online space. I see that all the time. People want the quick fix. And I'm just like, no. Like you got to change who you are and you got to have a long-term vision for your business that's going to be sustainable for the long term. So it's not a quick fix. Will you get quick wins? Yes, but that's not what what you want to go for. You want right. to you want the short-term and the long-term goals. And this applies to any area of life. It doesn't even have to just do with business. Like I could, you know, go walking for 30 days in a row, but I'm I'm not thinking, oh, I need to walk 30 days so I can lose five pounds. It's like, I'm going to walk 30 days in a row so I can create a habit that will allow me to keep my body in shape and moving and healthy exactly. and alert. Because guess what? I, I would like to have grandchildren someday. You know, so I, have, I have a 24 year old and he might be having kids soon. I want to be able to run around and, <laughs> and chase them and have fun with them. And then, you know return them back to the parents. But, (laughs) but, but yes, I mean, thinking about the long term, I know it's so easy for us to think about the short term, but it's like, let's think about both, you know, think about both. Like, what do you want now? Like, what are the immediate things that um, you want to solve or create in your life now? And what I mean by now, is like within the next 90 days, like I like to think in quarters, you already know this, Charmaine. Um, and this goes with every, every area because 90 days is a long enough time to not only create a habit. I know they say it takes like 21, 30 days. To create. I don't think so. I don't believe no. that. That's, that's my person. Yeah. I, but 90 days, that gives you time to like, just really see 
where you may want to make improvements um, and just really make it a habit, make it a lifestyle and, and, and re- reflect on like, what did I do over these 90 days? Let's celebrate the wins. Like, wow, I did all of these things. Okay. Let's, let's go 90 days more and see what happens, you know? So doing that for the short term, but then also thinking about the long term and making sure they are lined up. It just makes it so much easier to navigate life. Even when the shit's hitting the fan, uh, unexpected things happen because life is going to happen anyway. There are just things that we're not going to be able to control or stop life can be tragic and sad at times and and depressing but the thing is that should not stop you from creating the life that you want so when it comes to motivation majority of the time you're not going to be motivated to do the things that are going to create the life that you want you know (laughs) that's just a fact. And I wish somebody would have told me this right a long time ago. Nobody told me this. Like I always looked at like successful people, like they were always motivated. Like they were just like this different breed, you know, they're aliens or something like that. But no, they, they experienced the exact same things. They just realized they're not going to be motivated any day, every day. So, or even most of the time, how about that? That's that's the reality. (laughs) Most of the time. So it's, it comes down to how bad do you really want it? And are you willing to change like who you are from the inside out in order to make it happen? Because nothing's going to change until on the outside, until we work on what's going on in the inside first. Yep. Everything's created twice. First in your head and then in your life. Yeah. Stacy. Fabulous. You like I love. How can they find you in these internet streets, girl? Internet streets. So you can find me. I'm everywhere on all social platforms. Unleash Your Ambition. Uh, you can find me at unleashyourambition.com. I have a podcast, Unleash Your Ambition podcast. And also I have a YouTube channel. Pretty new. Learning the ropes with that and being very patient with that. But I do have some <laughs> videos up. And it's Unleash Your Ambition with Stacy Walker. <laughs> Cool. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and it freed you to see your life a bit differently. Make sure to check out those show notes in the description for a full rundown of today's episode with all the important links and resources. If you want weekly exclusive episodes with me personally, make sure to sign up for my Simplify My Life newsletter. I'd love to know what you enjoyed about this episode. So leave a review to let me know how I can continue to support you. So mama, I want you to know you're doing much better than you think. You're further than you believe and you're worthy to have it all. So until next time, stay weird and keep doing you, babe. Coming up next time on the We Ain't Normal show. What happens is we don't listen to ourselves. Somewhere along the line, somebody said, don't listen to yourself. People pleasing stems from self-worth and what others, that also is a childhood thing, right? If you are always maintaining other people's emotions and like always trying to keep a house happy and all that stuff, like you felt like in order for others to be happy, you had to make them happy. And sometimes that was like at the detriment of your own self. Want more of this episode? Make sure your podcast notifications are on and you're a part of the We Ain't Normal family by going to thecharmedlife.show to get weekly podcast updates and notifications. I'll see you there.